Hello YouTube, this is Christian coming to you with another review. Today on the table is the Vanquest Katara 16. Now, um, as opposed to what I'm doing usually, it's just randomly run over the pack. I'm going to do this one a little bit better um, and a little bit more along the lines of how Nick Shabazz does it. Just go over the features, bits and pieces, and at the end we talk about the good, the bad and the ugly. So. Um, this this bag um, I got because it's um, a little bit smaller, a little bit more compact than the Javelin. Um, it's another pack that I greatly enjoy. It's a great little pack. And uh, this one was supposed to be a lighter, more compact option for my daily EDC. Now, looking at the bag, um, I went for plaque, uh, mostly to take away a little bit of the tactical look obviously if you're going for uh, OD green or uh, some of the sand colored options or even black camo uh, you, you straight away give a little bit more of a military appeal and this blends in a fair bit better. So Vanquest specifies this bag to be 16 liters and uh, overall the construction is a Cordura fabric with uh, 500D <coughs> on the main main body and at the bottom they go with a 1000D which is a little bit tougher and a little bit more abrasion resistant uh, if you put the back down. Uh, starting at, at the top you can see um, the top admin pouch if, if you like just has a big uh, loop section which is great if you want to slap your patches on there um, Personally, I think uh, it looks great. It's a very good idea. Vanquest logo is not uh, too obtrusive. It's nicely uh, stitched onto the loop section there. So no complaints on that. Overall, I think the looks are, are really, really good. Then um, there's another admin pouch right under it, which is a little bit offset and angled. So personally, I like that a lot. And this admin pouch here also features that laser cut pelts webbing for your molly attachments. Looking at the side of the bag you can see there's a relatively small Hypolon laser cut pelts webbing on the side. This is great mostly because uh, there's no external attachment option for water bottles. I like to put uh, a molly water bottle holder onto the side of things and uh, it gives you uh, the option to put your water bottle on the outside of the bag which for me is always a preferred option I don't, don't like any spillage inside of my bag especially with electronics in it. <clears throat> this Hypalon material is actually pretty good it's uh, quite tough it's a rubberized fabric if you like and um, does a great job. I have it on a number of bags and I haven't had uh, any issues with it whatsoever. Uh, then on the side here you've got uh, a couple of buttons and these primarily serve to restrict the travel of your, your zippers. This is a complete clamshell design so we will see later on that you can open it up completely and uh, if you just want to access the bag from the top then your actual zippers, let me get them up for you, would be restricted in such a way that you open up only to the first third I would say and then you can access only the top of your pack. So that's a great option as well. On the side here you have uh, a concealed carry compartment um, that is held closed with hook and loop and there's a rather uh, let me see if I can show you a little bit better that's a relatively large loop patch there on the inside and you can tag your holster on there or whatever you need for concealed carry might be on the bottom of the pack you have a little bit more 
webbing. It's just a slim strip. If you have to tie something onto it, that gives you plenty of options to add something onto the pack just in case the volume is not sufficient. And it also serves the purpose of having a slightly raised wear points on the bottom of the bag uh, that can be quite easily replaced. So the first thing that will wear through is these straps before any kind of abrasion, abrasion gets to the 1000D Cordura on the bottom of it. And that also is a great little feature. Uh, turning the bag to the back side, at the moment I have it set up as a three-point sling, which um, is a main reason why I got this bag, because I like sling bags uh, for their versatility. You have um, a rather nice padding here that is ventilated. It's a small bag, so usually you shouldn't have uh, too many issues with that getting too hot. It's re a relatively small contact patch on your back, but it's there. It's uh, nicely padded. It is functional. So looking at the shoulder strap, um, this is the right side shoulder strap in, in backpack configuration. So it is a convertible bag. You can swap that out and actually add a second shoulder strap onto it, in which case this shoulder strap in sling configuration would move to the other side and this one would take its place and then you would have it converted into a regular backpack. Uh, we will convert it a little bit later on but right now let's stick with the pack. So the padding on the shoulder straps is, is nicely done. It is um, a good amount of padding in there and on the inside you once again have that meshed fabric that is offering uh, a good amount of breathability. Um, if anybody out there, one of you guys, please leave a comment if you know uh, what this loop patch is uh, supposed to, because for the, for the heck of it I couldn't figure out uh, why you would have that loop patch there. Maybe one of you guys knows. I've uh, had a look on the website, but there's no information on the purpose of this one, so maybe you can enlighten me. Um, other than that, we, we do have a number of attachment points on the shoulder strap and a little hook and loop strap out over there if you intend to use this bag as a hydration pack, then you can run your straw down here. The pass-through for your, let's say, electronics or for your water bladder is up here. It's ambidextrous, so you can come out left or right side, whatever the case might be. Then down here, um, <coughs> this is a stabilizing strap for your, uh, for your shoulder um, in sling configuration or the other side of your um, backpack uh, buckle, um, which can be stowed away. You've got a little, little pocket under here and you can slide it in there and have it vanish completely if you don't need it. I personally think uh, a sling pack isn't a sling pack unless it has uh, that three-point attachment method, which is a great feature. Uh, the hardware on this is, is great. It's awesome. And uh, with Vanquest you always get those additional Velcro uh, retainers, which allow you to tidy up the excess of uh, webbing on those um, on those straps. Also of note is that um, this uh, buckle element here that attaches to the shoulder can be moved, so you can open that up. It's a rather stiff one, which is a good thing, and just move it to another spot if that is a requirement. So pulling that out and putting it to a different spot is not an issue at all. So as far as conversion is, is concerned, it's relatively straightforward. I'll just put the bag sideways. So you've got a plastic G-hook clip up there that you undo. You open up this, this button here and then you expose 
hold on, let me open this, then you expose a big hook and loop patch underneath. This comes off and a nice little detail is that they actually used an orange thread for marking the position of your shoulder strap attachment point. That is appreciated and now we can simply put the shoulder strap on this side, add the second one to this side. There we go. Close that up, make it tight. Hook our G hooks back into position. And we have converted this pack into a regular backpack. There you go. Right? So all that's left now is that this three point attachment buckle goes back on and it now serves as a sternum strap that of course is movable to wherever you would need it. Now this is uh, awesome, this is great, gives you options in terms of uh, how you want to carry this, this bag. I like the idea, the concept a lot. The buckles down here, they're sitting under some elastic loop and they are somewhat protected. Looking at the zippers, that's all YKK reverse sued in. So that, what that means is just that the self-healing uh, bit of the zipper, um, the teeth that mesh into each other are not exposed. Uh, they are pretty much protected by the fabric of the zipper underneath, which uh, helps a lot. Also, I have to compliment Vanquest for the choice of zipper gauge or the zipper size. In this case, this is uh, the smaller variety on their Javelin. They went with beefier, beefier zippers. And uh, personally, I think uh, the smaller size is a great choice, mostly because uh, your zippers run a whole lot smoother. So that's greatly appreciated. On top here, uh, you can see the top handle is fairly uh, well padded. And they have a Lycra kind of material on that which gives you nice grip and feels comfortable in hand. All around also the one thing that I always come back to, the one thing I don't like is their Spartan zipper pulls. Uh, they put a bit of a bias of a, of a leaning element onto your zippers when, when you pull on them, which uh, is just resulting in less smooth zipper action. Uh, something I, if I was to keep this bag something that I would most certainly want to change. Back into the compartments have a closer look at the internals of this bag. Here's your top admin pouch. Uh, you can see I don't have an awful lot in there at the moment. I don't rely on these organizational features of the bag. I just put all my organization into pocket organizers or pouches because I move in between bags a lot. But that being said, uh, it's there and it's very functional. And the one thing I always point out that I like a lot about Vanquist is their high vis interior, which just makes black components or darker components really pop out and you don't have to wear glasses to make out what's what. So that's a great feature. I personally love that. Also the fabric is a ripstop nylon, which is fairly durable and uh, the ruffled look is rather nice for me. So I'll just have my earpods in there and the little Perron uh, flashlight from Olight. And on the other side, you have that meshed see-through uh, zipper pocket, which uh, holds smaller items really nicely. So that's great. And there's a fair bit of volume in that upper pocket as well. As compared to the Javelin, I have to say that I like this compartment size. It's a little bit more versatile than uh, on the Javelin where it's rather boxy and on the smallish side. 
um, going to the second admin pouch, if you want to call it that, you can see you have a somewhat similar layout. You've got your uh, zipper pocket with the translucent mesh and there's a little bit of volume in that too so it's a, a little bit expendable which is also a very nice feature. On this side I just have a driver kit, then uh, Olight accessories, another pouch, you have a little keeper for your keys and you can see also in this pocket uh, you have a fair amount of volume at the top whereas here at the bottom it's perhaps a little bit more limited because the material at the bottom is a bit stiffer and this is just my backup light in there. So there you have um, a relatively generous main sleeve and two smaller ones to organize uh, a little bit bigger items. Uh, also I find that to be a rather functional element of this bag and I kind of like the way that in a front pocket I have enough space to store away bigger items. That's uh, a positive throughout. So that's my main admin compartment. Now moving on to the interior of the bag as already pointed out. Um, this bag is for top access or geared towards top access as well as side access. So if you use it as a sling pack, one of the great features of sling packs, should turn it the other way around, is that you can access the contents at the bottom of the bag from the side. And this is done a little bit better in my opinion, in my view, than it is done on the Javelin. And the reason is uh, the Javelin is a little bit deeper. It has more organizational options on the inside in terms of having dividers and patch, um, hook and loop on the inside um, and a more generous opening. But the way they radiused that excess bit of the bag um, is a little bit stiff with the zipper. And this lighter zipper here and um, this this way of opening the bag uh, is, is easier for me there's no doubt about this one so you can access these while you carry the bag um, and swing it around over your shoulder and have it right in front of you just under your chest and uh, that is for me one of the great features of these bags you can see that <clears throat> we have the current contents so my first aid kit, my EDC pack and my cable management, that this is pretty much loaded out. On, on the top here, you can see they uh, have a, a place with elastic straps and uh, a little pouch that you could use, let's say for a tourniquet or some other accessory that you want a quick access from the side, which is a nice little feature. On the Javelin they go with a zippered pocket, which uh, would be my preference over, over this solution, but um, you also have to say there's just limited space and so for a zippered pocket it wouldn't make an awful lot of sense. So that's alright. That is the side loading option. Now if we want to and that is also a great feature of this bag. We can just open it up completely and treat it as a clamshell design, and which it is. And you get the contents of your bag fully exposed, which is nice. So as you can see, oops, let's get that a little bit tidier. As you can see, these are my EDC items, which we're going to remove for the time being. And here we are. So on this side, um, this is your water platter slash notebook sleeve. Uh, they integrated um, your loop section up there to hook in your water platter if you choose to make use of that. And then this part is your notebook sleeve. On this side, um, they went through a fair bit of trouble to uh, offer meaningful 
organization. This is your top access zipper pocket. Once again, see-through mesh. It's great for smaller items that you want to keep up there. Perhaps uh, sunglasses or anything along these lines. And around here also relatively expendable. Um, a side access pocket. If you use that bag as a sling pack, then this becomes a really handy feature. So that's a good thing. If you don't need that, don't want that, you can open that up completely, roll it in and get it out of the way and therefore make loose use of the loop section on both sides of the pack. So there's a fair bit of versatility there for you. So personally I like to keep it closed. If I stuff my pack to the brim, like you have seen, um, just uh, my three pouches in there already pack it up uh, to a good level. Um, you probably won't make much use of this one uh, just because it's too hard to reach in there and get past all your other items in there. But if you are not as packed out this becomes a viable option. Um, thoughts on the sleeve side. Um, I'm not entirely sure why they went for that uh, kind of triangular shape on top of the notebook compartment. I feel uh, we would have been better served if that went all the way up to the start of the radius of the bag up here. Um, that would have given us more uh, loop section to, to make use of to attach um, one of their packing cubes or uh, ex other accessories that uh, feature hook and loop. Um, this way it is somewhat limited especially since uh, and most of it is only accessible on the bottom of the bag uh, where I don't need to secure things uh, all too much really. If I want to secure something with hook and loop I really would want it up here. Down there everything is restricted by the floor and the sides of the bag anywhere. There, there can't be an awful lot of movement. So I think just going up all the way with that uh, hook and loop section here would, would have served uh, would have served the user a bit better. But okay, so that's already kind of a wrap up in terms of um, in terms of features. There's plenty of them and it is a great bag. It is great, great build. Build quality is awesome. It's up there. Materials used are top-notch. So there's not an awful lot to complain about in terms of quality. There's uh, nothing in there. So this already kind of leads in into um, the good, the bad and the ugly. <clears throat> now the good is this bag is really versatile. Um, you get so many options how you load out. It is um, hard to find alternatives out there that offer a similar amount of versatility. Um, there's no doubt about that. Overall quality, fit and finish is among the best that I've seen. There's uh, no issues with the seams, with the materials used for sewing the bag together. <clears throat> Hyperlon, Kodura, Leica K zippers. Um, and it's not just <clears throat> the way they selected the materials. It is also obviously a lot of thought went into making these. All of that is great. Now, as far as uh, the bad is concerned, let's let's put it this way: there isn't a, there isn't a lot of ugly. Um, perhaps one point: the bad, if you want to call it that, and I'll put it in brackets because it's not too bad. <coughs> You're getting a pack um, that is convertible, and that just means it's a compromise. If you, after a sling bag, then there's no doubt there's better sling, sling packs out there um, in terms of comfort and in terms of ergonomics. And if we want to make a quick side by side and look at one of the really functional slings and we look at the Maxpedition Sitka, then you can already see that there's some distinct differences. For one, um, 
a dedicated sling bag offers you a wider strap which just takes the load a little bit better. Um, it's wider, it's padded a little bit more substantially and one aspect that's important for me is that we have proper pelts webbing in the proper width and the proper orientation on the sling which allows me to attach molly accessories such as a phone holder at the place where I actually want it. So that is one thing in a dedicated sling um, that you really want to see. The other thing is the length of your padded section of the sling pack. And you can see that if I just push it up approximately to the same level that we're just missing out by 70 to 80 millimeters in, in terms of length of the actual shoulder strap which brings uh, on the on the katara which just brings your buckle too far up on your chest it's just sitting too high and um, part of the load bearing is then on the unpadded uh, section of the pack um, inevitable the other thing is that a sling pack you want to open and close a lot with the main buckle and therefore a big sturdy easy to grab easy to identify wide load bearing buckle is something you want to look for uh, in a backpack you only use the back the buckles to quick detach if somebody grabs your bag from from behind or if you're getting stuck somewhere in the bushes and you need to uh, drop your your pack then you use those other than that there's not much reason to use the buckles um, and just having it under those straps um, is, is a bit of an inconvenience in a in a sling situation so that's the main thing my main com complaint is by trying to do both backpack and sling you kind of get a sling that is not quite as good as other sling packs in the way it rides, in the way it sits on your shoulder, it's just not quite as comfortable as other ones. And as the load is sitting on just one shoulder, um, that becomes very pronounced when you're carrying it over, over longer distances. So that's one of the disadvantages. As a backpack, no issue at all if you're after a backpack. Uh, then this system is absolutely fine. There's no complaints. This works great. This is a comfortable backpack. As a backpack, nothing wrong with it. Now, the other thing is this is not something to consider. This is not a backpack that stands up. Right? So if, you, if you're after that, if you're, let's say, commuting to your office every day, and you want an EDC pack for that and you have your backpack sitting next to your office chair all day um, then this is just inconvenient go for the javelin if you want that that's a bag that stands up hell even go for the adex um, that is a bag that stands up it just gives you easy access to your contents while standing next to you this one uh, will just fall around so or you, you need to lean it, you need to hang it, you need to find another way, but you can't stand it up. Which is not a big thing. There's lots of backpacks, lots of sling packs that won't stand up. Um, great in use, nothing wrong with it. Um, but I'm just pointing out, it's not a stand-up bag. Okay? So, my biggest gripe, and the biggest ugly for me, is really... And it's not necessarily on Vanquest, I'm not saying that at all, but what I'm saying is this is a 16 litre bag, right? Now the Maxpedition Sitka is a 15 litre bag. You can see something odd about this one, all right? Let's put it on the side. Let's have a closer look sideways. Right. So somehow I'm getting more volume out of a 15 litre bag than I'm getting out of a 16 litre bag. I'm not sure. 
where that, that comes from, whether one um, expedition is uh, a little bit understating their volume or Vanquest is overstating them. I can't say that, I can't confirm it, but there's a mismatch, right? Also, if I look at the recently reviewed uh, Vertex commuter, which, uh, yeah, let's line it up, this is a 17 liter bag. This is a 16, right? Isn't that interesting, right? So look, 17 liters, 16 liters. I've been using both bags. There's no way I can get the contents of this bag into this one. There's, and, and not just by a difference of one liter. It, it's just no comparison whatsoever. So, size, what I'm saying is, whether it's in the way they measure it, whether the way it's in the way they specify it, um, you can't always rely on a 16 liter bag from this company to be comparable to a 16 liter bag from another one. And it is relatively pronounced if I compare the Katara to Maxpedition's offerings or 511's offerings or Vertex offerings and many others. It's just smaller. Um, that being said, it might be 16 liters and the other guys are over, uh, understating it. I can't tell. But it's the first time it struck me when I got this bag that said 16 liters, it appears to be a little bit small. Um, another aspect on, on this, and this uh, is regarding the concealed carry side of things. I'm no expert in this. Um, I don't carry concealed. But if this bag is loaded out, this pocket in here, I'm, I even have trouble just getting my hand into this one, let alone pack it with a gun and then really reach in there. I, I would call it a little secret compartment, but if access or quick access to a firearm was a consideration, then this just plain wouldn't work. It's, it's just not, not enough space if you pack and load out this, this bag to get good access to your, to your sidearm. Uh, no matter how you twist it. On, on the Javelin, they put it on here on the back side, which makes it more accessible. It suffers uh, from similar issues. It's just a relatively low volume compartment. Um, and then whatever you put in there is really riding hard on your bag. Uh, I'm, I'm a little bit at odds with these, um, especially if you compare it to some dedicated uh, concealed carry um, items like, like the Vertex bag. Uh, where really free and easy access to that compartment is, is a top priority. And I understand it is trendy to kind of advertise that as a feature, but how usable that is, please leave it in the comments and, and let me know because um, I'm a little bit plaisé about it, admittingly. You guys will know far better, but if, if that is something you, you actually use and rely on uh, to carry a sidearm, I don't know, I, I would have some serious doubts. So overall, I can recommend this bag if you're after a smaller bag. And um, if you're, let's say, a little bit smaller in your body build, uh, and you don't have uh, the needs to carry an awful lot of equipment, um, it, it has all the hallmarks of Vanquest greatness in terms of quality, in terms of uh, organizational features in terms of accessibility to the bag. Uh, but don't rely on your experience with other bags in terms of size and just assume it's going to be a little bit smaller because that has most certainly been my experience with this particular bag. Other than that, I would recommend it uh, as a backpack. I wouldn't give it a pass on, on the sling pack side. Um, 
mostly in this form factor, in this size, there's dedicated slings that just do a better job. So with, with the Javelin it's a little bit different because it's a boxy shape. Um, it has a couple of, of different um, ways of storing your material, especially in, in terms of uh, internal organization with dividers that kind of lift it up a little bit because there's just no other sling pack out there uh, that does it in such a meaningful way and therefore I can kind of step over the compromise I have in terms of compromise for the benefit of having all these additional features I see uh, that incorpor incorporate it into, into the Javelin. Um, the Katara just plain doesn't have that and uh, you could quite easily get a Sitka and uh, be a happy camper in, in terms of um, everything really plus have the additional carry comfort if you're after a sling pack. Uh, as a backpack it, it is a relatively high recommendation also uh, for a smaller day pack. <clears throat> There's nothing wrong there so uh, it would end up relatively high on the list if you like uh, the look, if you like the way it is uh, organized. Um, it, it's a great bag and uh, gets my recommended as a backpack. Okay, so um, this was my take on the Katara. Um, please feel free to leave a comment, especially regarding your experiences with concealed carry. And if you know anything about that uh, bit there, the hook and loop section on the shoulder strap that I'm puzzled about, please uh, feel free to leave a comment and let me know what you think it is for. Okay, so you all enjoy the rest of your weekend and I catch you next week. Thank you, bye bye.